Hi. Near future Scott here. Welcome to the Shadowlands, Realm of the Shadow Band. I decided to spend the holiday out here. I don't know if you guys remember this, my brother's holiday. Billy's kind of a major player in the world where everything went to neo-paganism and they tried to boot out God the Father and Jesus and tried to make all the holidays not about him. And my brother, unfortunately, was there to fill in the void. My cool, older, anime-style brother with metaphysical powers, Holiday Bill. You don't want Santa Claus is down on so-and-so's Steen's Island doing his thing being Santa Claus. I told you. I don't know if I, you know this about me. I have major beef with Santa Claus because I said this before and I'll say it again. Your parents are the ones that pay for all that stuff. And he just shows up and he does some magic over it, whatever the magic is for wrapping him stuff, and then he skates. I know, but my brother is the guy. Who's the go-to guy? Uh, we need Bill, Holiday Bill. He uses all his metaphysical powers in a weird way. I don't know if it's against Dad. I don't. I don't know. But anyway, Holiday Bill. He's got his own. Chris, he's got his own holiday special. Sorry. Hol he fills in for Easter Bunny, Arbor Day. If they have ASPCA cat stuff. Holiday Bill's the guy. He's the guy with the white. He's the anime guy that wears the Viking helmet. He looks like a handsome Santa Claus anime guy, and he's really tall and everything with the abs. And that's my brother. Holiday Bill. So he's got I'm enough about him. So he said, Hey, Scott, just have Christmas in a smart city. You can just be like Studio 54 and look down upon the Orgy Porgy. And you can watch all the beautiful Neo babes and the CRISPR women and all that stuff. And then you can cry and then you can make the social credit points while you cry for real, and I know it's real tears, and the other people that are watching and cavorting in the same upper level as you, the voyeurs or whatever, because that's the level that I'd be on, because I don't want to participate. It's disgusting. You know what happens at Orgy Porgy? Everything. You're not gonna, there's no way to avoid a reach around. It's an Orgy Porgy, a holiday Orgy Porgy, where they're like, woo, it's a holiday, turn it up. Anyway, I could be doing better, and I opted for Shadowlands. Have you noticed, they made me obsolete, I developed Carpal Tunnel from what I was doing, trying to get by in a brave new world. I'm getting older, my eyes went bad, and here I am, I don't want to go transhumanist and get the chip, the Elon Musk thing in my eye. I scavenged the Shadowlands where I'm in a shadow band, and my brother's doing God knows what to who knows who, and because of his metaphysical properties, isn't catching anything. I would catch something right away. And I'll tell you what, I don't like the idea of, like I'm old fashioned, really old-fashioned. I may be one of the last men on earth. That's kind of the theme of this particular holiday episode. Loneliness and isolation. Are you spending this holiday alone? I encourage you to leave comments, a lot of them, because YouTube's probably going to censor them. So just keep coming back and bombarding this episode with comments. This is for lonely people, for lonely men, lonely women, because this is adults only, of course. How do you identify? All right, adults only. Can you see that? Adults only. Did I hold the right side? Yes, I did. Yeah, look at that again. Can you read that? Adult only. That's and over there. Okay. I, I wanted to do that up first. Look, the hide wars are going on. Do you hear that? Yeah. It's against facial recognition technology. And then there's all these Joker people and the Purge people. So I lost my benefits. I'm of the age bracket where it's voted that the younger generation in the back section is getting pro programmed by, you know, Adpocalypse 7 and the advent of 5G and then the free, the children's phone liberation thing where everyone was said, no, all kids will have a, uh, have a phone. It's like a drone phone that flies around and it monitors the parents and whatever. It's just terrible what's happened. And then anyway, facial recognition technology, hide wars. I lose my benefits. My brother says, just come, you don't have to go. You can just stay in your life pod and you can just watch whatever you want. You can go watch old nostalgic, you know, uh, 1970 sitcoms, 19, what do you want to watch, old commercials? That's what you like, Scott, you like old commercials. And he's telling me about all these really cool jingles. I'm like, yeah, I know, that's my thing, it's my jams. No, I said I'm gonna make my own holiday in the memory of Christmas and keep it alive. Because I remember what it's about. This is the reason for the season, right here. This is one of the things I've... Okay, for starters, this is what happened. 
They pushed everybody out of the countryside and the rural areas and even the suburbs, and they pushed everybody closer together. And then they called that the Planned City or the Megalopolis, and it stinks to live there. Like, it smells bad, all right? They deprive some people of oxygen so they can't think right. It's just like the air on Mars should be free, Cohagen. This is the holiday special. This is the reason for the season. The birth of our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Baby Jesus was born whenever he was born, symbolically, on December 25th. And it doesn't even matter nowadays. I mean, you know, I don't know what's happening too. There's other things happening weird in the Shadowlands, around the shadow band where we are. And MIT planes are flying over and they're like cool looking day glow. It says MIT, but they fly over at night and it looks like Avatar glow in the dark, like party plane stuff. And you can hear mm, 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 coming from the planes and they fly over and they let out this like glow in the dark stuff and it just absorbs in the plants. And I don't know what they're trying to do. MIT, are you trying to make glow in the dark avatar landscape everywhere? What's that about? I don't know, it's just weird. It's probably just some kind of like 5G receptive stuff so the plants grow however they want them to grow in that district so that if you live in this place, you're gonna be deprived of selenium. And if you live over there, you're gonna be deprived of chromium and adamantium and whatever kind of minerals and stuff so that you can all have different you know, advantages and disadvantages in the Hunger Games or Battle Royale. It's for the kids. It's for the holidays, too. But I know what it's really about. And I don't, no matter what kind of shenanigans we get up to, I don't want us to forget about the reason for the season. This is what Holiday Bill feels guilty about. And I know he probably, when he's alone, and I shouldn't say this about my brother, but he's a cool anime brother and all the women love him and everything. And he's got like a, he's got one of those, you know, those Legend of the Over fiend like things but doesn't explode anybody and they, they love him it's disgusting but anyway he's the holiday villain he even does Groundhog's Day there's a couple of times where the Groundhog's Day Groundhog didn't like I don't know they died or whatever they did to it or whatever it was hanging out with the Kennedys party too hard it was busy with the Bill Murray Groundhog's Day 2 filming alright yeah what does Andy McDowell look like now look at that bone structure as an old lady yeah, it probably looks like um, Gina Davis from Beetlejuice at the end Remember that? Huh. That's the holidays. Remember Bill Murray and Scrooge? We're going to talk about, are you having a lonely, like I chose to scavenge the shadow ones. I have so much stuff to show you. It really is a holiday special. And I can be my own memory of the lie that we gave to our progeny about that guy who shall remain nameless, who I have a problem with. Because mom's, the parents, your caregiver, your provider, pays for all your presents. And then he puts his name on them and it says, from the helpers of so-and-so, it's my Voldemort to me. I've got real beef with Santa. Can I say that? I've got beef with the guy. Okay? This is adult stuff. It is. And this is adult holiday special. My brother told me all kinds of horrible stuff about him. I believe it. I got into it with the guy. I said, how are you going to take credit? Look at this. It's a very plain special. We're full of dead bodies. The hide wars are going on. And look at that. It's like a cornucopia. Look at what I still have. I don't have a lot, but I have what matters. This matters to me, all right? And I've had, this was mine. I carried this with me. You know, forget about uh, having a Simon Pegg Boba Fett. This is, this is something real, all right? And I could be in a smart city and it would be warm and it wouldn't be like, I don't know what's gonna happen. MIT keeps flying over with glowing dark shit. But anyway, I managed to be here. Look at how these are just bleached bone. Do I have to worry about disease? There's no way. All that Last of Us spore stuff that they released. Hey, it's the future. It's a brave new world. It's 1984. And that's why I mentioned this. One of the few things that I have from the olden days that's actually mine still. This changed my life. I never thought I was going to be appreciated. Even after the dreaded events of uh, January 1st, 2020. Where the YouTube, they started YouTube thunderdoming people and they they melted down all these different, uh, shoot, they melted down shoe on head with a flamethrower and they killed all these people, not in YouTube, but physically in reality. 
This saved my life. It was my 1984 award. I kept talking. I had the right name for their weird spells and ways. Or like, we shall let the one whose name is Scott Free. I know I hate that. I don't ever want to draw attention to it. And I'm doing it for holiday special to let you think about that, about my BS name. Not only to mention my name is Ree. Like, Ree! And I'm not that, all right? I'm not that. All right, I did hide in Smart City, covert operations. It's still available. You can see on BitChute where I went undercover as an SJW, where I'm a dude that does my own hair, where I just go ee, and I shave around the whole sides and leave the thing looking like onion head and gaunts. Remember that the little onion boy? I thought I was petting my dog, and it was this because my dog looks like this. I'm not kidding. Where's my dog? I want to get my dog in this. It's holiday special. So anyway, my eyes got bad. They wanted to give me those ghost in the shell replacements like that cool guy that she hangs out with. And I'm like, no way, man. I don't want to look like Hondo or whatever his name is. All right. Besides, they look more like the slim guy that doesn't want to get any implants or transplants or whatever it is. Right? I'm that guy. I'm that guy from Ghost in the Shell. Remember that? This is the holidays. It makes me think about anime. I had progeny. They're living in the smart cities. They, I don't know what kind of horrors they're creating with CRISPR. I'm just kidding. I don't know where they are. Uh, I decided to go Shadowlands on the Shadow Band. They went their way. It's sad. I know. Uh, I have some plans to get into the hatcheries. Shh, spoiler alert. I want to get in the hatcheries. I want to make some little resist resistance rebels that are breeders that have my eyebrows. Because that's the thing that always comes through. They always get my eyebrows. And it doesn't matter. Even my daughters are beautiful. And they are many and numerous. And they're breeders. And guess what? They're keeping it alive. They're looking for husbands. They have trad values. Nobody's getting in there unless you stand barefoot before the Lord because it's kind of hard to arrange for priests since they've erased all that stuff. And the holidays, just like Japanese, it's like um, it's like Japanese Christmas now in the future. It's uh, gender non-specific. It's not only uh, colored lights and everything. It's rainbow everything. Okay, whatever. That's fine. I have to whatever I have to do to survive. I'm not gonna criticize that in this day and age of YouTube. But I'm just saying, it doesn't have anything to do with this, which is with the reason for the season. It's all about annual gift man. It's all about actually cool Japanese commercials when you go into Neo New York City and all that stuff. Hey, why don't you come up here? It's Poochie. She may come up here. I want to show them to you. Show you to them. She's getting so old. She's one of the oldest dogs in the world because I never gave her dog food in her whole life. And uh, hopefully, I want to show you cool things I found. It's a holiday episode. I'm forgetting myself. This is for people. Are you spending a holiday alone? I feel alienated and isolated because of my big mouth. IRL. And you know, Facebook doesn't like it when you say IRL. But guess what's been happening to me? IRL. That's a dog going upstairs. I couldn't tell what it was. So anyway, I never mentioned this. There's so many things I'm going to show you. It's a holiday special. Look. Look. To save my life, it's my Orwell 1984, my Orwee, my Orwell Award 1984. I was one of the best online comedy prognosticators of Brave New World in 1984 and the Bernays, Brzezinski, Husky Brus, Hus, Huxley Brothers. I'm sorry, there's so many people I want to thank. I just, I'm sorry, my brain goes there. It's one of the highlights of my life was the video I made thanking everybody and naming all the globalists, but Carol Quigley. Um, Arthur Kessler, Ghost in the Machines. I remember when that was a new one to me. It's kind of a new one to me. Um, it's really important. Um, Brzezinski, Between Two Ages. Remember in the olden days when I used to call it Man Between Two Ages? And I'm like, I have the book that's not even the title. And I'm like, ah, and I was so blushed. And you didn't care. They gave me the award anyway. Why? I had the best post apocalyptic dystopian sci fi comedy. I invented the genre. Not only was I the original mammal out of pop culture, the first OG champion of love in the back section, yo, number one, that's me. Also, I was a prognosticator of the Brave New World. What was, what was the thing I was going to say? Oh, sci-fi dystopian comedy. I invented the genre. I tag every video with sci-fi dystopian comedy, or almost every video. Even after I had to delete my channel to hide from the Copa Algobots, it gets complicated. Algobots, it's AI algorithms and AI learning and bots, and they all get together for their own kind of orgy porgy and it makes something a mess for us. And they don't care because they let it be a mess. And it's one of the things trying to save the world for you guys digitally. I ruined my eyes. I was also trying to impress 
a woman trying to get into the smart city just to get her out, trying to get her to come to Shadowlands. And what would I have to offer her? This. And it's a lot for me. Okay? And I think I think it's allowable. It's not too decorative. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of scared. I'm thinking maybe I should... Should I, just, should I just turn it out? Yeah. I feel safer. I might need it. So anyway, this saved my life as a bludgeoning instrument. It's one of the few things I managed to get away with. It's surprisingly durable. I know it's a little loose now, but it's just like, oh ha! And it doesn't come apart or anything, I don't think. Not yet. But anyway, my aura we. It's like, you know those video games where the guys are running around with like, hey, I got a cool Johnny Knoxville leather jacket and he's hitting zombies with like anything, all right? This was my anything, all right? And it happened at the holidays because I want to make some kind of horrible event to take away from the birth of Jesus and then want to do some kind of horrible Luciferian inversion stuff. Spoiler alert, look out, and elections are coming and blah, blah, blah. So I was a little bit worried about some kind of nonsense and it just I had this. I didn't want to get into what it was. I want to talk about good things. Look, I found Billy Beer, a can of Billy Beer. Can you see that? That's actually worth something. If this is like early Green Agenda stuff, where like, I'm joking, where Jimmy Carter's brother was like an early version of Jeb Bush, but like either more or less embarrassing, where he made a beer out of peanuts because the president was a peanut farmer and his brother said, My president, my brother got in there, Jimmy Carter. He has the good intramuscular density to brace himself for that kind of bodily abuse of both ends and the gagging and the anal cream pies. Billy beer. It's not in there. It's just peanut beer. It didn't take. I don't know what it tasted like. It's empty. But you know what? It's like I remember the world, right? The gas shortages. Billy beer. It's uh, embarrassing. Or something. I don't know what you're supposed to think about it. Look at this. I have, I don't have a holiday hat, but I have this. Look. It's like, it's like that guy, but it's also acceptable because it's like a pompadour, and that's okay. And it's also like Elsa from Frozen. I don't dare put this on. That's too much like a prop. You know what? I was gonna do it, but I can't. You know why? I gotta retain the last hues of my manity, especially in a holiday special. And I want you to know, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. There's a holiday special for anyone. And look, I could be in a smart city. I wanted to be here with you. I chose to be alone. I wanted to talk to you about DVDs. I've got a stack of DVDs here. Look at, they're lighting up. I want to show you that my, my memories of jokes I used to do in my family every year. I have some perennial personal mementos before the Brave New World went into full swing where they just started to call it that and everything was like, media was just called, we were watching the Disney and that's where you just go to like, you know, and it's like you watch rides and stuff and you take your thing. Look, I was thinking about women, I have a doily because why? We're gonna eat, look, Dollar Tree because that's where rations come from. We have rations, we're gonna do blue rations. I think it's a legally authorized sanctioned opening but I'm not gonna show the opening. <coughs> So I won't get in trouble. You'll just get the idea it was an opening. And maybe, just maybe, there'll be a holiday miracle. And here's a holiday miracle. I have my good old lovable Ashray. Remember that? Remember Ashray? Look at how good she holds up. It's her breeding. She's a Ridley. Anyway, look at that. Remember Ashray? Yeah. And I found this. I don't know where this thing was. But the miracle is if I can get this to light this and I don't die. Adults only, because that's who smokes. Look what else I found. Look, I'm like an off the grid thing where you stuff the plug stuff in outside Vaporwave City. I'm trying to find a place for myself, I'm trying to settle down with somebody. I, you know, trying to get one of these little, trying to get myself a crisper bride or whatever. Um, anyway, look. Scavenging the Shadowlands, or I'm a shadow band. I went to an abandoned Dollar Tree, Dollar Star, Honorable Number One Chinese Authority Authorized Warehouse Place, and I got some products. And I can't show you me opening them, but I can have them down here below, and I can eat them. And I found cool stuff. And look, I don't have anything really locked down, and anybody could just come in at any moment and terrorize me. I'm very vulnerable, especially trying to make a video. But there's a lot of other people 
in the Shadowland Germany Shadow Band, making content and sending you back in time, like I'm sending this to you to 2019, to say, can you please not let this happen and do whatever you have to do for Brexit and to break up the UN or whatever it is the bad guys are. Look at what I have. This is the reason for the season. This was my grandmother's. I'm not kidding. This is my grandmother's and I have it with me. I have blinded men with this thing, which is maybe horrible, but this makes me feel secure. I found it and I was like, it's a lock. And I'm like, maybe I'll have some kind of thing to make a door. Like, look at this. Like, this is like David Lynch stuff. All right. I'm getting a little bit weird. You know, like Wilson and Tom Hanks uh, with the tennis ball, the beach ball, soccer ball. I remember this is pop culture. We're going to talk about movies. It's confession time. It's holiday confessional. It's a holiday special. Holiday special. All right. You know, I want something to be where it belongs. All right. Under the tree. Okay. Under the fake plastic tree. There's so many of them. I told. Anyway, this is the thing that I'm having a hard time with. There's not a lot of decoration around here. You know what I'm going to say, don't you? I kind of put these bodies here. I know it's really a bad idea. And I touched them with my bare hands. Just like, do you remember The Walking Dead when it was a TV show and before it became a 5G reality? You know, IRL, right? And there are people just like melted cell phone, peak a day zombies. But you know, like now, dress more fashionably, melting in your their plastic clothing. Oh, ugh. and then you're just whatever. The horrible melting. Anyway, um, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going back there. Um, uh, it's HD footage. They wanted you to see it. It was intimidation. Um, it's a holiday special. So anyway, I found a lot of things. Look at, look, Jacob Butcher, man. I'm gonna do some. I'm gonna like. I'm look at. I look appropriate. I look appropriate to make a deuce inside here and then go, wah! And in 40 minutes, like, maybe I'll live. Maybe it'll just be over. You know, I don't know. Did I mention, I did put these things here. I did arrange these things here. Look how bleached they are. I shouldn't touch them. Oh, this is the Walking Dead thing I'm going to say. In the Walking Dead, forget about the cross pole and possibility and all that stuff all the time and pulling them all out and getting dirty. They would just touch these dead, rotting bodies of like re-died zombies, like that died again. They would just keep touching them with their bare hands and pull out knives. Look, if you've ever used a knife or done a sword or whatever, nobody ever pulls a knife out and then cuts something with it and gets zombie blood in it and puts it back in the scabbard. It's a whole process you have to go to. And this is holiday special, and I want you to know, okay, that it's just not. This light is too colorful, it's making me nervous. Is that, what do you think about that? Should I shut it off? I'm gonna shut it off, and if we need it, we can put it back on. I just feel like there's too many agendas and stuff. I don't want this to be too interesting. I obviously can't plug these in. I will be eating off of these, but I can't show you. I can. Sh I, I don't know if I can even eat. Uh, but I did scavenge these things from an abandoned, bombed out Dollar Tree dollar store thing. That's where you get your rations from. Let's see what's inside the rations thing. I found, I know what's inside it already. I mean, like I'm scavenging, I'm trying to survive. I immediately open it, make sure it's not booby trapped or some kind of thing where they're trying to like get me to ruin my um, personal dignity. I knew it was in here, but there's no balloon. So that's the problem I have. Like, I don't have anything to make a, a chamber to capture the thing that's the sweet, sweet juke, Jankombucha. The jank maker, Dr. Jankmunds, Jankombucha, the jank maker. Marley's own. It's another brand of Jankombucha. It's the two kinds. Everybody seems to think that Dr. Jankmund is more reputable. Marley's own is making me a wa having me feel the walking over my grave feeling that someday in the future, if you've been a long time subscriber, that Marley's own may be the original sponsor of Jankombucha that this channel has, wherever it is. And right now, I'd like to pray sincerely and truly. Not, no kidding. Please, Father, I pray that I get to remain here because uh, Scott Free, and I get away Scott Free, so I get to keep making videos because they're like TV shows, 
about a post-apocalyptic dystopian sci-fi future. And I know that you guys, by the time you see this, you may have Netflix CEO paid for and approved. You know, like, he wants it to happen. smell a vision and I scavenge this, and this stuff never goes bad, and I don't think it's gonna explode in my hand, and they're kinda of shot anyway. I have a feeling if I can survive the hide, this holiday season through the hide wars, whatever, I'm far away from it. I'm safe, you can hear that, right? You can hear it, right? I mean, like, everywhere it gets piped in these holiday songs that don't have any, like, nobody knows what they mean anymore, and people are usually drinking blood, and they have, like, cells inside stockings. I have stockings. I don't remember what they're for anymore. Should we talk about movies? Look, this isn't really anything you can do anything about, but it's more for me. It makes it smell like pine, okay? I'm in some kind of weird David Lynch thing, all right? Minimal production value. I, I wanted it to feel more like the holiday, so I brought dead bodies. I have one dead bodies. They're bone. They've been, you know, 5G melted away. That happened. Okay, so look. I have one, I'm like Charlie Brown, I have one singular ornament. And I, was, I hung it already to cover up the light. But let's do it now, because I shut the light off and you can still see me. And it's very dry and drab. And obviously for adults, it's only like a comedy lounge. You know, like this is where drinks are served, kind of environment only. I'm having mangoes, and MIT's flying over. Everything's becoming infected with cannabinoids. Um, the megafauna is howling, but don't worry. I'm perfectly safe. Can you hear the howling? It's in the background, but there's hideous howling. I know you hear a lot of artillery and stuff like that. It's raining out there, but and raining artillery, and Skynet, and I can't call them Terminators, but you know, like Boston Dynamics and a weird Russian company, and then there's drones, and it's just terrible. But anyway, the megafauna that they made, the Hunger Games things that they put out, so the guys like you or me couldn't survive out here in the Shadowlands or on the Shadow Band on this very lonely, or in our case, because we're, you know, we're just alone, our alone holiday time. And you could be even a woman. I'm not being, I'm being serious about this, you could be. Maybe your mom, you're watching this, your kids don't come see you anymore. Hey, I'm single, I'm old, I, won't, I, don't, I don't want to have anything to do with your kids. You raised them, great. But you know what, if you're alone this holiday season, Scott's here, and I'm gonna keep coming at you with, I don't know why I said it in a terrible way like that, like I never would, with holiday videos, and I'm gonna hang this now, ceremoniously, and it's just my Jimmy James advertisement and wife quest I'm looking for one of that last of the blonde haired blue eyed white woman that isn't beat up and tore up in 2019. I'm gonna tra time travel back there for you and bring you here for my dystopian sci fi Christmas, all right? As my own personal thing that I have to keep and take care of, like a burden or whatever. What does it say in the Bible? Anyway, it says, it says stand, before, stand before God the Father or an actual terraform of barefoot if it's safe down the ant flux grass while you can. Oh. And stand before your father if you mean it and say, Father, the world's weird and nothing recognizes our union, so we'll bring it right to you. There's no intermediaries between you and your father. Or if we're together on this, then it's our father. That's what's great. That's when people say brothers and sisters to other adults. They mean brothers and sisters in Christ. The reason for the season. Why Christ? Because when he was born, they were ready for him. And they said, there's kings going to see him and a whole bunch of stuff. Get the baby, get the kings, and they wanted to kill him. And these guys brought frankincense and myrrh and gold. And if you look up your essential oils and your new age weirdo person, frankincense and myrrh oil, that's almost like a hundred bucks or maybe more than that by now. I don't know what the rates are. And you only get a little thing like this that says like dot zero dot two ounce or something like that. And it's like really, you put it on your body for raindrop therapy. That's really big. Why am I mentioning that? In the future, everything's like, oh, it's the holidays. This everybody get raindrop therapy. And they just lay down and look into their devices 
and on their backs and they have hot oil that smells like cinnamon or pumpkin spice or Christmas you know it's like pine and it's on their back and it's just good to just not do anything and watch devices because you know why do anything different holiday oils it's a weird brave new world did you want me to talk about movies I want to talk about loner stuff isolation stuff so I, I, I theme my movies like that this is about the lone individual. I should have put, I could go get it, it's over there. My DVD hoard, I'm kind of like hiding in that. I hate Funko Pops, but I have made myself a shelter. They, I, like I said, they would, they work. I got a heat gun, I used solar thing, it took me a day. I, I charged the heat gun for the day, and then I melted Funko Pops. I think the sunlight helped. They radiated, you know, like how they, they fly over and they make the sun do horrible things. And it's like, well, just make it here. And then it doesn't weigh anything. It's made of Funko Pops. And I'll lift my Funko Pop igloo shelter life pod thing over. And I'll be like a homeless person in Japan. And I have solar panels so I can still go online and everything. Everybody wants to go online. It's Ready Player One. I don't have a Janelle's van life. I'm not cool like that with 4 million subscribers and blink of an eye. I don't have a Ready Player One shipping container house. I never played video games. I didn't know it was important for social credits to be able to play video games. Now I suffer for it. But I like it out here. I can do whatever I want. The megafauna is sedated by, and I didn't know if I mentioned this to you before, cannabinoids are in everything. In everything. They're in the aquifers. They're in the trivulets and outside. That's outside the Shadowlands where the waste runs off where all the minerals and vitamins and nutrients that people don't get from their smart city stuff go out and run into the... It makes people and megaphone, made my gut biome all the way that God the Father wanted it again. I healed my ailments. Everybody has these in the future. When it changed people's guts so that all they could eat is corn, sugar, mush and change your pancreas into a thing that just processes corn sugar, horrible GMO, corn, wheat, and soy sugar, the people chow, the soil, and they want, they want people to turn to cheese puffs and marshmallows. It, it happened. It's gross. That's I told you I don't want to go to Orgy Porgy. Okay? There's like the better ones. I don't get... That's like the, the ones for like the elite, the, the beta plus, the alpha pluses, and the alpha... All the alphas. Uh, you know, it's Holiday Bill. He's up there. He doesn't even get me into those. Like, I don't look like I can get into it. Those people are all gattaca they all look like um, Jude Law and um, Uma Thurman or whatever. I don't know if she's like a Gattaca person. Is she that great? She's just in the movie. There's my movie recommendation, Gattaca. But there's a bunch. I didn't even get to the movies yet. I'm going to. Okay. This is a holiday tradition. Every year, uh, there was this broken Justin Bieber toothbrush that was given to somebody, and then they threw it away immediately. Not because it was broken, just because it was a novelty thing that was bought and broken on clearance to give us somebody like, why'd you give me this? It's embarrassing me. This is dumb. I don't like this guy. It wasn't given to me. It was given to somebody else. And, and uh, so I saved it from the garbage. And every year, I put it in a different size box, not being marked. And somebody gets it. And they're like, oh, the toothbrush again. And guess what else I do? Another thing. It's never been opened. Okay. Um... I can't find it. Let me grab all this stuff. These are the presents on the tree. The DVDs. Let me look at them all so I can show them to you. Oh, this has never been opened. I don't know what it is. You see that? It's got the... I want to prove that I'm not so lame that I'd ever open this or masturbate to it or anything. It's got plastic on it. It's got the... It's got the seal. Something Jessica Simpson. It's a concert DVD. Oh, wow, her singing to a tape recorder, bouncing around. Hey, Jugs McGee. Every year, it gets put in a box, and the box is wrapped, so you can't tell, because if it's, nobody cares about DVDs anymore. So I'm going to do it again, but I'm not going to make a video of it, because YouTube won't like it. So anyway, I don't even know if I should be holding this next to me. How old is she in this? It doesn't matter. But anyway, it's never been opened. It's never going to be opened. I have a bunch of them that are just bad DVDs that nobody ever watched. Some kind of like Medeus something or other. It's like one of the bad ones. It's not one of the good ones. So anyway, I want to talk about Apocalypse, Last Man on Earth. I want to talk about DVDs and mental defectives. And another novelty thing that gets given away. Illegally Blonde. Can you read that? We, 
Reese Witherspoon, whatever her name is, illegally blonde. Do you get it? That's funny. The progeny got this from Mad Magazine or something. It's a fake DVD cover, and I'm like, very funny. The other one was my big fat Greek webbing. That's funny too. It's about Nia Radalis marrying Spider Man. And there's the back. Ha ha ha. They go into detail. It's funny. Somebody should make a website where they make fake DVD cases, except they're obsolete. So there's no point. I have some genuine holiday specials that are weird. It's appropriate to this channel. I scavenge wastelands. I find dead people's DVD collections. Um, and I save the good stuff, and I'm showing them to you. I have a collections of, like, Last Man on Earth stuff. And where's the other one? I'm always missing this one. This one I always want to show you. And it always, it's always not here. Oh, there it is. I got it this time. All right, hey, these are improvised impromptu. I'm very nervous, okay? Can you tell? Do you hear all that artillery? Do you hear the howling wolves? They're in heat. That's why I'm gonna say I'm safe. Don't worry, I'm safe. They're in heat. They're howling because they're swollen up inside their mates. That's the megafauna, all right? Megafauna is animals and Hunger Games monsters and stuff. Or they have all, they have them all weird and furry, like the way they want them to look. And then they send them out to Shadowlands or the Shadow Band to kill people. But everything, the aquifers, everything, the runoff, is filled with um, all the vitamins and minerals that they don't get. It just passes right through them. And then we get that out here. It looks like Willy Wonka's inside the factory, outside and everywhere. Sounds really cool. But I'm in some kind of weird mid-zone, ether zone, like Lily Schuster or something. And it's got curtains and limited production value. So we're going to get back to DVDs now. Okay, on with the LARP. So, uh, a dollar, or maybe this is $5, I don't want to lie. Um, for movies, Omega Man with Charlton Heston. I Am Legend with Will Smith. Go check out the alternate ending while it's still on YouTube. And Dark City and Logan's Run for $5 or $5.95 maybe is more accurate. Logan's Run, the original one from the 70s. Is Jenny Augerter in that? She's good looking. Jenny Augerter, if you don't know who she is, American Werewolf from London. She's got nice ones. There you go. Merry Christmas, American Werewolf from London. It's a comedy horror movie. It's got a great rack in it. Uh... Do you also get to, no, it's Rachel Ward's boobs you get to see in that one where she swims with her topless. I'm perving out. Look, it's very lonely out here. Uh, everybody's dead. The women are involved in the Hyde Wars. They're fighting for, you know, trad values, which I don't really know what that means. But I know that, I, I, know, what, I know what they're fighting for. They want to be men and women or the couples. They have to fight for that, like for their lives it's like it feels bad it feels like those battles um, where they're gonna lose like in Game of Thrones or Helm's Deep or whatever like we're gonna lose and the kids are getting ready and you're like oh no that little kid that looks like baby Thor has an axe in him remember that and then the Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings I can't remember anymore Dark City dystopian sci-fi everything's all like you know Matrix jackets and stuff and vampires and I can't I don't remember Dark City but Charlton Heston, he's the last man on earth. It's a good movie. And he, he winds up with a cold black chick at the end, but then he dies. Charlton Heston keeps playing the last white man on the planet in the 1960s, and it's a good one, Omega Man. But it's not the best man. I want to do the trilogy for you, and I want to give you the first one. The best one. The Last Man on Earth. Vincent Price in black and white. The Last Man on Earth is Vincent Price who's a closeted gay man who keeps talking about his wife even though nobody's watching him anymore. And he minces around the apocalypse in black and white with David Lynch and noir lighting. And it's really cool. And again, he's the last white man on the earth and everybody else is vampires, which is just the elite metaphor. And then they get him eventually. But he's cool. And I like Vincent Price. And you can just watch him be Vincent Price through all these movies. And a cool true f fact about Vincent Price uh, he spent all his money on bathhouses and boy, no I'm kidding he spent all his money on like famous paintings of Picasso's and lived in the hotel room and when he died he had like Picasso paintings and stuff because that's what he spent his money on I don't know if they were good Picassos but it was like all those artist works that people appreciate and people say isn't that quaint about Vincent Price and I'm like no, I hate all those guys I don't like Picasso, he's a jerk but I like Vincent Price and Last Man on Earth it's my favorite Last Man on Earth thing until I make one I think I can do that. I think I'm gonna make a movie for you that's my 
monologue as Last Man on Earth and make it an hour and a half because I think it's a good mo length of time for a movie. So there you go. That's what you're going to get in the new year somehow on YouTube or somewhere on some platform I'm going to be making if it's not done already. The Last Man on Earth thing. What I do when I have the whole world to myself I just decide to settle someplace and eat canned food and survive the post-apocalyptic dystopian sci-fi because everybody else got 5 g Anybody could do this movie. And I highly recommend you make your movie about what it's like to be the last person alive and what you do with your time. Will you make salads for yourself in the irradiated stuff so you can keep eating your vegetables until all the irradiated produce goes bad? Will you chew up carrots in your own mouth and spit them into your salad and then dump dressing on it? Because why would you wait to cut them? Anyway, look. Um, the Last Man on Earth, that's the good one. It's the first one. It's the best one. It's based on... Um, I Am Omega by Richard Kelly. I forget his name. That's a director. I forget the name. It's a writer. Richard Matheson. He wrote I Am Legend. And it was this vampire story where vampire virus took over. It's a great video game premise. Did they make an I Am Legend video game and not about Will Smith? But anyway, everybody gets taken over by a vampire virus. And he's the last human alive. And everybody comes out at nighttime because they can't stand the sun because the light of the Lord shines in the daytime or something like that. But Richard Matheson's avatar is what Vincent Price plays in Last Man on Earth. And it's, it's one of my favorite movies of ever. I just like it. I just do. And it's just one guy, I said, one guy mincing around the apocalypse. It's true. It's, I really do love this movie. And uh, Charlton Heston, Omega Man, it's good. It's not one of my favorite movies. I like it. You know, like I have a style, like what do you call it, like attachment to it. I like it. I Am Legend, Will Smith. I like it too. I think I just like The Last Man on Earth scenario stuff. Dark City, and I don't know, it's like some kind of narcissistic dream world stuff. It's, I know like there's probably like a really cool breakdown of it. I have to watch it again and I don't remember what it's about. I'm not really interested in that one. Alex Press, he did Crow 2. Who cares? Um, Logan's Run. This is good from 1970s. They'd be dead by 30. I did, my old podcast did reviews of Logan's Run. Maybe they're acceptable, I can put them back up again. I don't know. Um, what else? Loners and Losers, Marwin Call. Forget about that Steve Carell, The Office. Um, he made a Marwin Call movie. It's called Marwin or something. It, this is the real guy. There's a real life guy that likes to wear high heels and he got beat in the head and he's a talented artist and he couldn't remember who he was. And when he came to, he made a doll village inside of a doghouse or something. There's a documentary on it. I have, hate to admit, but I've watched this like maybe three or four times. And when I saw that I could get the DVD for cheap, I knew that this is a DVD that's already worth money. All right, like maybe like $15, you know what I mean? But DVDs, they're giving them away at the Dollar Tree, Dollar General. I just told you that for a dollar. Did I bring the Congress this time? No, I didn't bring it. I had a bunch of other stuff. Because I was focusing on loners and losers and rebels and stuff like that. The Hyde Wars, Holidays, Jesus, uh, setting the Bible, Old Testament stuff straight and giving us... I'm not going to get into Bible stuff too much. I don't want to get it wrong. Marwin Call. It's the fictional name of the town of a guy who got hit in the head so bad that when he came out of his coma, he said, I don't remember who I am. Why do I have a whole closet full of women's shoes that are my size? Not my size, his size. And Mark Hogan Camp is his name. He made a movie about him. I can mention him. I can name drop him. I'm not a millionaire or anything. He became famous and made money. And now he has a place to live in. And he moved on from having dolls to life size mannequins. And that's closer to a woman. So maybe that's progress. Marwin Call, it's a really interesting documentary where he winds up in a new New York modern art MoMA scene. And he gets to wear high heels in a big city. And people like photographs of his. Uh, G.I. Joe dolls, his very expensive Japanese G.I. Joe dolls, and he loves them. Oh, my Dejathoris. Oh, no, I'm not doing Wow Lynch Wow. I'm doing Hogan Camp. And then I don't know what happened, man, but I love her. She's a time traveler. This is, this is like some guy really, he made up this whole LARP that he lives with Barbie dolls. And I'm like, this is our brave new world. Like, they're encouraging this because, like, people are, are falling in love with dolls and stuff. Like, I'm a bodybuilder and love my real doll. Not me. I mean, obviously not a bodybuilder. I, have, I can't lift them. That's why I, 
You know, like I said, I could be in the smart city. Oh, Holiday Bill's brother, and they're like, oh, Scott and everything. I become a problem, but I also, I get to teach as an artifact from the past. I get to teach their elite kids that they want to have old-fashioned values. I'm a relic from the past. I talk to them and say what I can say whatever I want because they're allowed to know anything. I get to talk to them. So who knows? There was a. That's what I do in the smart cities. But I wanted to have the holidays scavenging the shadow engine of the shadow band because I'm safe. I said it's loaded with cannabinoids. It's crazy. Um, it's not the time of year for firework flies. Otherwise, they'd be around. Wouldn't it be great to have firework flies around the holidays? That's the one time that you don't have them. Why to ruin it? To take away from the reason for the season, which is in Marwin Call, a fictional town. The last man on earth. Again, this is something I got really cheap a couple years ago when it didn't matter to anybody. Did they cancel the show already? I liked it when it was just him alone. This guy's a weirdo. I don't really like him. Is he hosting a late night show now? Is he one of those guys? They get rid of Conan for him. Um, I like it until there's other people in it. Then they put other people in it. They had they started with one other woman, and I'm like, okay, it's a man and a woman. That's it. Stop. But you should have went longer with just a man. So this is all I need for this, and I don't need this. I don't watch this, but I liked it. When he's alone, if you can watch the pilot for free, that's all you need. It's just him having the whole world to himself without, like these sci-fi dystopian things, they never talk about nuclear meltdown or nobody manning the plants, like The Walking Dead, like shouldn't there be like, like meltdown all over the place because nobody's managing anything? Whatever. It doesn't matter. The Walking Dead is just about giving people weird ideas of what to do to each other to harm them and and prey upon each other in hard times. And that's what The Walking Dead, that's what they want you to get from it. And that's your Christmas present for me of social engineering in a time when I can't give you presents like that. I can only give you social engineering stuff. This I bought and then I managed to get two other times for a dollar each. But you can tell what I paid for it. And 48 hours was going on in business. Are there any 48 hour videos left? I don't think so. I think they went before Blockbuster. I think. So anyway, um, 48 hour videos. I bought this for $5.99. God bless America. It's another loner story. Bobcat Goldfarb directed this. He calls himself that. And it's about a horrible kill spree where they kill all your fevered egos and pop culture people like all your MTV, like Sweet 16, Teen Mom, and, and their parents. And they go on a horrible kill spree. They kill, you know, like religion. Um, I'm not against religion, but they kill those like West Memphis Baptist people. It's a comedy. It's a comedy like network where this guy just does monologues complaining. Hi, I'm one of the Murray brothers. And then he goes around with his low leader or whatever. And they kill people. And it's weird. But um, they get rid of all the American Idol people. They get rid of Simon, Paul Abdul. And they just, and the contestants, the people that you're like, Oh, William Hung, and he's pop them all, and it's a comedy. It's about loners. It fits the theme of this episode. Another Bobcat Goldfarb because they were next to each other in a DVD pile of um, lackluster video. That's what I call my my video thing that I live in, where I can still get the DVDs up, but they're fused together, except for these ones I pulled out for you. Um, my Funko Pop igloo, so I can carry my home with me like a turtle shell, because it's so lightweight. I don't weigh anything. So anyway, what's the next movie? Enough of the LARPing. Robin Williams, world's greatest dad, because he's a lonely guy that just decides like, you know what, I don't have a friend in the world, and I've surrounded myself with fakers, and I'm tired of being a faker myself. And it really is a great role for Robin Williams. And he said when he was still alive, it's his favorite movie he was in. And it really is my favorite movie he was in, World's Greatest Dad. They, they spent the money to use Queens under pressure, and it's used appropriately. Do you want to see naked Robin Williams where you get to see it all? Hey, you get to see it all when he dives into a pool um, where he's just like, you know what? He's like cleansing off all the filth of how we've all been programmed into bio robots and social engineers. And it's a, it's a cool loner story about breaking away from it without hurting anybody. Robin Williams realizes he's the shit. I don't want to ruin what the movie's about if you haven't seen it. But hey, maybe if you're alone this holiday season and you want to kind of get feel uplifted and listen to a Queen song at the end, even though you know about Freddie Mercury and his story about prolapsing young boys' anuses, that's a present for you. Uh, Freddie Mercury has stories of going to South Asian uh, boys' houses and prolapsing anuses. 
and then taking it out with his pants around his ankles and declaring with perfect aplomb, this one's broken, can I have another? And the madam just waved her fan and said, and the other kid went with Freddie Mercury, and the kid was like horrified, he's like, what'd you do to him? And he's like, don't worry, I won't let it happen again. And he picked them up again like a penguin with his pants around his ankles. Happy holidays. That's a Freddie Mercury story. Under Pressure by Queen. Spoiler alert. It's used appropriately at the ending of this movie. And you get to see Robin Williams' junk. If you want to see that. Robin Williams. He's good in this. And he said it was his favorite thing he was in. Robin Williams, rest in peace. I can't help but think that in some way, I know he was of the people. I do believe that Robin Williams believed in God the Father. And somehow that matters, even if he didn't accept Jesus. I don't know about that, but I do. And you can too. All you have to do is want to. If you want to get married, the Hyde, um, the Hyde Wars are kind of about people staying married and the right to be together. I didn't even think that we'd get that from Hyde Wars, but I didn't. it became that. Okay? Dragnet, another one of my things I got for a dollar. Joe Friday, he seems like a lonely guy. He was your early guy that came up with theories about things that were C-O-N-S-P-I-R-A-C-E-Y? Or no, just Y. And then theory. Um, but anyway, Dragnet. Hi, I'm Joe Friday and I have weird ideas about, you know, the future. And that's what Joe Friday did after Dragnet. Hi, I'm Joe Friday. Lonely. No, who wants to hang out with Joe Friday? Henry Morgan? He had to. Harry Morgan. Harry Morgan. First, he's in Dragnet. And you think, he's like, oh God, I finally get to retire. I get away from Joe Friday. He's a weird guy. He's always telling me this weird stuff. He's so grim. Joe Friday. And then what? He gets drafted for the Vietnam War and he's in MASH. The Korean, a uh, Korean War, sorry. He gets drafted for the Korean War and becomes the guy that everybody loves. He survives it. He even survives in the after MASH. He has to hang out with Joe Friday and he has to go with the MASH unit. The Korean War lasts seven years and Harry Morgan, he was also part of the man from Uncle, I think. No, he also has to hang out. Just let me finish this. It's fun for me. The Korean War is seven years and he has to stay there for 11 years stationed in MASH. And then after that, Harry Morgan thinks he's out. No, they didn't pay him good. And he still has to be in it. For what? For after MASH? With Radar? That Dr. Death song was horrible. That's the MASH theme. It's a song about, like, euthanasia or something like that. It's got lyrics. It's a creepy song. Go look, look up MASH theme Dr. Death song. There's a holiday video treat for you that I can't show you, but it's a karaoke song, and it's got a video to it, and it's the MASH theme, Dr. Death. It's an early karaoke thing. It has a video to it, and it's weird and grim. Remember when the helicopter blew up? Happy holidays. Oh, ho, ho. I gotta stretch. I'm getting a cramp. I'm hunching over. Okay, so Dragnet. Harry Morgan. It's sad, right? And then, Joe Friday, I don't know what happened to him, but I still do have my original, authentic, black Joe Friday dragnet whistle. Yeah, doesn't help you. Um, so anyway, Mandy, it's one of my favorite movies. Uh, what are you gonna run out of the house with? The DVD player, Mandy, and your solar thing that you can watch it on. Mandy, it's about love. Even when she died, he said, I don't care if they got my Mandy. I took her out, I made her a glass house. Why? Young people in love. I know Nick Cage isn't young, but in this movie, I, I feel like Red is younger. I want to do a review of Mandy. Things to be appreciative of the holidays. A copy of Mandy. I still managed to, look at, I managed to have the outside. Yeah, I take care of it. It's about uh, revenge for the death of love. That's my synopsis of Mandy. It's my holiday movie recommendation. It's got a lot of red in it, holiday colors. Um, it's got a, va a jar of Vaseline that makes Nick Cage see the other dimensions and it's something you should never do. Stay away from all that stuff on the holidays. Don't see shamans on the holidays, all right? Um, Mandy, it's you know kind of sad, but at the end I like to think he's like a Ghost Rider superhero character because he did play Ghost Rider. Or at the end, Nick Cage and the soul of Mandy 
their love is so strong and they died so horribly in a cult that at the end, I really think some phantom version of Mandy really is with them and she's sad because it's their fate, but they really love each other so much that even though like he made some kind of weird devil's deal because he drank the Kool-Aid and got stabbed with the sword and became evil Avenger or whatever of his, like he made some kind of weird Luciferian, he's kind of some weird Luciferian hero on this, I don't know, Panos Cosmatos, he knows what he's doing. Did you ever see the, the Black Room or whatever? Go look up Panos Cosmatos' other movies. I can't remember what they're called. You don't really want to see them. Don't watch them. They're bad. This is the one you want to watch, Mandy. You can handle this. I can handle this. I don't want to see the other ones. I don't even remember their names because they're, like, disturbing. All right? They, like, they may culture you by watching them. And this is a holiday special. And um, so Mandy, I like to think he gets to be, like, with his ghost rider, you know, the soul of Mandy, and they go avenging other people whose love is gonna be torn asunder in like 1984, because I think Mandy happens in the year 1984. So he builds her a house of glass as part of her view, out of like window remnants and stuff. It's like, oh cool, that's like, you know, that kind of love. And he's a recovering alcoholic. It's in deleted features. Watch the deleted features. There's a couple deleted scenes rather. And they kind of inform the character. You don't, I'm glad they're not in the movie. But they, I'm glad they're in deleted scenes because they kind of do help, a genuine review, they kind of do help inform uh, the characters of Red and Mandy. And it's my, I, I, uh, I, I always liked Nick Cage from Wild at Harks. I'm like, you guys, that's the one. That's a Nick Cage movie. And, you know, he's crazy in a bunch of them. But Mandy, it's my favorite one because I like the whole thing of it. They handle the tone right. It's like those t shirts of wolves. You know what I mean? Like in the background, it's like a Frank Rosetta painting, wannabe thing. The cage is all like bloated and weird. And the press for Mandy, he looks weird. He's got like all this pancake makeup on. He's got weird hair that looks like, um, like spirit gum or something. Another one, embarrassing. Um, Emma Daughter's Jug Band Christmas. But I'm not gonna hold it up for too long. It's got Paul Williams score. Um, I think it's it's a weird social engineering thing, and it works. It's become a perennial favorite. It's anthropomorphized animals that sing um, Paul Williams songs that he wrote, and it's good. It's got like it has a holiday feel to it, and I'm like, wait a minute, this is all about animals. It's a perennial um, anthropomorphized favorite. The DVD it didn't cost nothing to get it, so have it. Am I really gonna watch it? No, it's my digital Fahrenheit 451 thing from Scavenging the Shadowlands or the Shadow Band for anything to remind people like it still exists, like this is important. Why is it important? Because um, this is like an Emmett Otter. That's before people wanted to create CRISPR kin and less things like that. This is just when it was like wholesome, it was just a man's hand in there, you know, like just doing things, like all thumbs, being an actual puppeteer as opposed to a smart city social engineering puppeteer. I don't know where I'm going with this. But anyway, um, wait a minute. I said Christmas miracle, and guess what? I think there was a Christmas miracle. Look, there was an empty bottle, and there was something I didn't notice. And I feel one coming on. It's the end of the hour. And I feel one on deck. And if I can manage to get any of my dehydrated peas into here, and, you know, if I have to use my hands or whatever. A little bit of Duke. I have to use a stick. I don't want to touch it. I'm not going to touch it. I get it in there. This is the Christmas miracle. I didn't realize it was inside the box. And I wouldn't dare do an unboxing. Ow! I hit myself in the knee. Here's the Christmas miracle. Here's the holiday miracle. Sorry. Ah, uh, it's a balloon. And it's too colorful, so I can only show it to you for a moment. Do you know what the balloon means? I got a balloon. That's in his hand. I don't even want to show you. It's bright colors problems with this. I don't want to get into it. That's for you in 2019, January 1st, 2020 stuff. So I can't show you that for too long. But look, but I'm risking it. Dr. Jenkmon's Jenkombucha and a balloon. You know what that means. Ah, I'm going to juke the duke. I'm going to actually get to do it. I said I feel one on deck. I think I'm gonna try and light this thing. Oh, Ray! 
Ashray, remember her? Yeah, she holds up well. It's the breeding, it's the Ridleys. They come from a family of rich people. <sighs> Not good. Guys, are you alone this holiday? Find something however small. Make it your, make it your holiday miracle, your Christmas miracle in my case. Look, I'm really smoking. God bless us, everyone. No, really, sincerely and truly. God bless us, everyone. And I'm smoking. I'm smoking. I'm really smoking. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. I'm smoking. And I don't feel like dying. And it doesn't taste like it's been in somebody's took us. Because sometimes I find cigars and I'm like, eh. I don't know if it's because it's been in the car seat from the remnants of cars. You know, people aren't living them anymore. But I found this, an ashray. Oh, oh, come here. That's the Star Wars thing. Oh, I hope I don't get in trouble for that. Are they gonna copyright strike me? Hide Wars. I have a spoiler alert. No matter what, love wins. As long as there's men and women, they're gonna risk everything to get together for unsanctioned nookie. And like, it's just gonna be me and you. And nobody's, they, they don't, they stop showing up at the orgy porgies and they try to be unmonitored. Or they show up and they just like don't, eh, eh. they just try to like navigate the whole thing. Like they put oil on and disco their way through the whole thing. And don't let me touch them, no retrons, get out of there. Whatever, it's rough, all right? But then you know what they do? They save all that stuff for a special person. They go hide behind one of the two pillars or whatever it is, or the pyramid or the compass, and they hide behind that and the statue of Baphomet or whatever, and they kiss each other and hold hands. And then they beat the out of them and they re-educate them just like they said they would. They get re-educated and it's terrible. It's the miracle. It's something good. I'm making something good of this. And I got a lot. I got a lot. Maybe it's not a lot to everybody, but look. It is still good in the can. It's pineapple slices. And I'm gonna drink the juice. I know it's not good. The aluminum, it doesn't matter. Everything has cannabinoids in it. I don't know what that does to you. Makes you docile. I don't know what kind of CFCs are in this, but you know what? It smells like the holidays, and I gotta be careful. Oh yeah, the memory of pine. The memory of pine. What else do we have? I've got this. I've got mango slices. This one has a peel top. This one doesn't. But it didn't show you what I have. One of the things I wanted to make sure I took with me. The opener. Also a really good bludgeoning. Also, my 1984. It reminds me that I used to be somebody that saved my life. I've actually dropped it. Somebody else has saved my life with it by bludgeoning. You know, you don't want to know what's out here. The horrible things that they, not in the Shadowlands, just like outside the smart cities where they don't want people to be. Bots, all right? Whatever it is, smashing drones away. It works. Where's my 1984? It's a big deal. It's also a reminder that I used to be somebody, a sit down, stay home comedian that did sci-fi dystopian comedy. I invented the genre. That's the reason I got this major award. It's a major award. Remember when women's legs were allowed to look attractive? That's another thing too. There's a lot of good looking women hiding out here in the Shadowlands or I'm in the Shadow Band. I don't know how they genderify or whatever it is, but you know why? The good looking ones have to run and hide because those face monitoring things, microaggressions, microexpressions made everything a beauty run and hide. Men and women both. I mean, there's people like me here too, whatever. You know, if I was a G.I. Joe character, they said, you're sewer rat. I said, fine. Uh, I don't want to do that in a movie. Just put me in a green screen or whatever. But if you want to, you want to hire me for that, if my holiday bill, my brother, the holiday guy, can get me in the GI Joe simulator thing where I'm sewer rat, I guess I would do that. But I don't want to be too noticed. You don't want people throwing arrows at you. They're like, hey, I like the guy who's sewer rat. I want to find out more about him. So they try to, and they're like, he's not really using social media. 
be thinking maybe be one of those shadow landers or many shadow band thinks he can go back and forth, which I am, okay? But this is like 20 whatever I titled this episode, Scott, Near Future Scott, The Hyde Wars. The Hyde Wars happened like several times, all right? Like this has happened before, it's gonna happen again. This particular time, it's for monogamy, which I, I, I agree, that's why I'm out here. I wanna be out here where it's safe. But I, want, I don't want to be in a smart city for the holidays. I want to be where the good people are. I was kind of hoping I would hook up with somebody. Not like a hookup, but for like love of a lifetime kind of thing. Um, everything gets healthier. All you have to do is get outside the smart city. Don't eat the soylent. Don't eat anything. And then you're going to be a, full of cannabinoids or whatever that does to your CBD from everything. It's saturated with it and all that stuff. And like you can't drink rainwater a lot of times because of they make the weather so it's all full of chemicals and then eventually like all their bad stuff backfires and becomes like minerals and everybody becomes strong and has super guts so even if you have to go in the cities and eat that disgusting stuff like your body just destroys it your probiotics just like wow we're gonna shit this stuff out and it makes you super strong like fry in that one episode of food drama yeah remember when i ate the worms from the sandwich the egg salad sandwich in space or whatever yeah remember food drama fry that was a man, a cartoon man, a cartoon man sensibilities, like I used to have, like they wanted all men to have. Sensibilities like Homer Simpson and Bill Murray and Ryan Reynolds and Deadpool and Chevy Chase and all your guys that play like, I don't know, like The Rock, or your guys that play cool, funny guys like, I don't care about it, I'm Steve Gutenberg, I'm a ho Sergeant Mahoney, you know? Whatever it is. I'm John Belushi, frat guy. I'm Pete Davidson. Just Pete Davidson, man. I don't have to be funny. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm Pete Davidson. I don't get that guy. I, I don't want to hear anybody. I was a young person was arguing with me. Like, yeah, but Pete Davidson's kind of like, nah, I don't want to hear it. And maybe that's not, it's rude to do, but I didn't do that. Senator Davidson now. Yeah, right. And he upgraded from Anand de Grande to somebody that's popular in the future, some kind of hot bot that you never even heard of, all right? And it really is like a hot bot. It's just some kind of like rubber 200 pound silicon body, but it became popular because the guy animated the face and that became the biggest pop star. And then they gave her all the big budget to animate her and somehow it still looks like a dead rubber doll with a person's face on it. It's a big hit. It's a big holiday gift. Everybody's giving mouse pads. It's disgusting what they're doing with them. But you can imagine, it's mouse pads, like those gross anime mouse pads. But only it's her. And a dude made the whole thing, which makes it really creepy. So it's like whatever this dude thinks. And this is a holiday special anymore. I'm just glad. It's working. It's working. Guess what? I'm still here. And I think whatever nicotine's in this is giving me... There's no nicotine anywhere anymore. You can't have that. And I don't know what they make in the smart cities, but it's all synthetic. You don't want that going through your system. This is a beyond Thunderdome, outside Vaporwave City, Shadowlands Roman Shadow Band, old abandoned Geostorm backseat cigar. I don't know what kind of cigar any cigar is anymore when I find them. All right, it's still possible to find them. But when I find them, and nobody would smoke these, okay? It's not cool, but it is now. I'm grateful, all right? You should be too. I gotta clean up this mess. It doesn't mean anything to you, so why should I get upset about it in front of you? It's a holiday. Let me see if there's any juice in this or this for me to enjoy this without burning my, smelling like a perm from burning my hairs off. Yes, so I started naming cigar butts after whatever kind of car I found them in. Like, oh, remember that was a really good, a really good cigar butt. It was a big one, like a real cigar. I think it was a Perdomo or something. It was a Presencia Organica Rustica. I, I make it up. I just imagine what it could be. Like, oh, look at this high-end quality cigar. It's probably just like a big stogie from a gas station from like, I don't know, like a, what's the one with the dinosaur station? I don't know, one of those, like one of those weird ones. And then, you know, I find the car, I'm like, ah, oh, this is a really good, you know, vibe. 
There's all these great cigars in the back of a vibe or whatever. I'm just kidding. That's probably where you're gonna find really bad cigars. If you like, this looks like a dude's vibe, don't smoke cigars. I learned the hard way. If it looks like it's a dude's vehicle and it's a vibe, it just looks like it has kid seats or anything, and it's just a dude's vehicle, and it has a lot of cigar butts in it, you don't want it. They taste bad, like you'd think they'd taste like. Not like a Karamari ring, but it looks like that, and it tastes like terrible. Like the kind of thing, a cisgender, one of the last ones, hi. Card carrying, because I have to, you have to admit to it, going up to it, so you can take your place in Orgy Porgy. And then they're watching anyway, they're horribly watching with facial recognition. Let me see if I can keep this thing lit. I should be enjoying this, it's the holiday season. They're fighting for monogamy. People, couples are dying because they'd rather die than have to sleep with other people. That's admirable. The idea that people say we love each other so much that we're not gonna let us be forced apart and then like, oh, we have to like, they're gonna make people do this. They're like, you can't be a couple anymore. That's what the dystopian sci-fi genre is about. I know all about it. I'm the dystopian sci-fi comedy of the guy. They let me do it in a smart city until I got too mouthy and they wanted to make me like Stephen Fry. Well, first they wanted to make me like Stephen Fry and marry a dude, like, too, like this gross. But they also wanted to do me like V for Vendetta. Remember that where they make Natalie Portman into uh, a terrorist by, you know, mind controlling her or whatever. And then Stephen Fry says something a little bit too, you know, Oscar Wilde in, in uh, the Zootopian sci-fi future of V for Vendetta written by Alan Moore. And then they get rid of Stephen Fry. All right. So anyway, I don't want to get too mouthy. I, didn't, I got too mouthy. I think this thing's cooked. I wasted it. I wasted it for you so I could keep talking. And this holiday is about giving. Giving up my opportunity for one of, like maybe one of the last cigars. I hate it, hate I'm kidding. You know, I'm not helping my love life by wearing glasses. But I want to tell you, like, this is the future. And as Scott gets older, before it gets regenerated from the cannabinoids, my eyes heal up and everything from living here longer. This is earlier in the timeline. You get it? I'm still trying to go on with it. If I can get away with it. Yes. More. More. Nicotine. I'm very quiet. More. So, ugh, it's really bad. Probably gonna bark soon. Happy holiday. No, but seriously, happy holiday. Don't give up on love. Don't give up on monogamy. It's worthwhile to, even if you're desensitized to it, to maybe try to stay with the same person, to live together long enough with them, like maybe not in the same building, but to have the same monogamous partner long enough to sort of, I don't know, kick on those chemicals for bonding for a lifetime so that you can get to ultimate level of, if not grandparents or great grandparents, at least elders, where you're a man and a woman who live through the age and want to tell young people how you need to be. You need an example of who to be and who to find for peace on earth for all mankind because a man and woman get together on this holiday season. A lot of people are born around Christmas. Did you know that? They are, at least in America. I don't know how it is for the rest of the world. But in the holiday season, a lot of people's birthdays are around then. And everybody says, ah, oh, you guys got, you guys, uh, it's not fair for you guys because uh, you have Christmas and your birthday. And a lot of parents are like, it's just too much, I'm gonna have the money. So they get like, hey, there could be two times a year. It's the birthday, the celebration of the day I came out of the womb. I'm gonna get presents and things for no good reason. I mean, it's a good reason, you're here. It's a whole new year for you, you came out of the womb. Boom, that's your start, happy new year. Whatever, you wanna say it like that? Is that too pagan to a cult? I kinda think that's okay. Is it okay with you, father? I don't know. Find a peaceful and loving way to let me find out online if that's appropriate. But I kinda think it's okay to think of your birthday. You don't have to have the weird hipster parties, it's a, a nuisance to everybody. But I think a lot of people got cheated out of their birthdays if they have one near Christmas, either before or after, too close. Because if it is too close, and that's your parents' rules decide that, you're not gonna get the haul that you could get. 
as sons and daughters of the kings and queen in the modern Western industrialized world because that's the traditions. That's how they rule. But how is it in the future? Statues of Baphomet with red caps soaked in blood. That's what red cap is. It's a thing soaked in blood. They just put, they switch the letters in Santa and just change it to Satan because that's all you do is switch the letters from Santa to make Satan. And it's called Satan. And he has horns now. And he looks like something the Dragon Ball Z fighters would fight because he's all buffed out and LGBT. And he's always in menage a trois on the Neo subways. And there's children, horrible, crisper children on leashes. It's a brave new world. Anyway, I hope I don't say the wrong words too many times. But this is dystopian sci-fi comedy. And it's all about the future and everything. And I can't code. I can't do any things I want to do. Which is great because I have no excuses. Hey, I all kinds of abuse in my body. They don't want any of my parts for anything. The, the voice, throat's ruined. Not, no, they're not going to use me for that, for gagging. Both hands, no good. Not going to use me for the down pole skiing, if you know what I mean when I say that. I don't want to get too crude. This is YouTube. No good for that. And the back end, that's wrecked, all right? I ate too much of your um, people chow. I just couldn't get enough of anything flavored like anything from the corn. Everything's made out of corn. You need to think about how much we eat. It's just corn. It's just from corn sugar with the flavorings and parts of other things. And we live off of it. We just live off of GMO corn. Anyway, all I'm trying to say is I never had to be any kind of neo-sex worker or anything like that. And I'm grateful for that on this holiday special. I can sit out a bright future. They never got any. I never had to do that. I never had to give it up. But I tell you what, it is gross to be covered in KY, sliding your way through the orgy porgies with your eyes wide shut mask on, trying to avoid facial recognition. And you're thanking your brother for it. I lost my cigar, but uh, I just really want to find it. I'm not worried about burning anything down. It's just like, I might still be good. I think I saw a toothpick or something. That I could, if I have to use a finger bone, whatever I can use to stick through, but I can light it again without burning myself and making my mustache smell like a perm, that would be bad. I don't want to attract anything to Shadowlands that would recognize the smell of a perm. Then I'm going to have to worry about my tuchus again, probably. Ooh, did I say that? Anyway, you get the idea. Um, it's rough out here, but it's better. Look, I don't remember what you're supposed to do with this anymore. Holiday sock. I sense like another holiday special that I'd done... I don't know what year it would have been, but holiday sock. I think it was something that you were supposed to, I remember. Oh no wait, that's um, teenager gym sock thing. Yeah, that's from my, that's from olden days. I didn't do that, but I know people who did and I'm like, eh, look at that man. I'm kidding, I would never touch that sock, but you know the crusty sock? Yes. I don't think, I think it's a bad idea. I think you should save them. I think you should save them for marital carnality. No fat. So anyway, one more time because we can. Where is it? Adult only. Adult only. De -de -de -de. I'm hoping it'll show up the right way and it won't show up backward. Adult only. But they like that, it's inversion. Even if I do do backwards, do do. There you go. They like that too. And I, I think I'm gonna get out of here now because I wouldn't dare do anything that would be like eating stuff or that I would intimate about that. But I'm gonna be grateful for what I have. And I'm gonna open this with my can opener bludgeoning, which I hope doesn't have gore in it. You have to clean it, okay? You have to clean it. It's like a sword. You can't just cut with a sword and sheath it with gore on it. You ruin the sword immediately, okay? It's gonna go bad, but I'm gonna use this, all right, because it's clean. How did a clean doily survive all this nonsense and the hide wars and everything? Blah, blah, blah. So, anyway, look, it's the holidays. I have a lot to be grateful for, and maybe you don't have a lot, but you have this video. You have a bunch of holiday specials from me. You have my BitTube channel for all kinds of great colors and other words that I shouldn't mention because they don't want me to even mention bright colors. I don't think I can even say those words, but anyway. You can go there. You have a whole bunch of holiday specials from me. Maybe more to come. I don't know when this episode's gonna go up. But guess what? This is even more than an hour. 
it's the holidays and I want you to have something. And a lot of people are spending their holidays online and indoors and they're becoming alienated increasingly and isolated from their families on devices. So that's why I've decided to give to you as many holiday specials as I can whip up before the actual day, the 25th, the day we celebrate baby Jesus' birthday. And I'm glad that, glad that maybe I don't have the rest of it, but I have this. I have baby Jesus, the reason for the season. He came and he set it straight. We, separate, we celebrate his birth and we celebrate the thing that we forget about on Easter. That's the resurrection. He comes back. He goes to Hades. He saves souls. He says, I'm back and I'll be back again. But he comes back the first time and he sets the record straight. And that does a lot for us. It helps create the civilized Western industrial world and the American dream that everybody was so fond of all over the whole world before Disney became a global empire thing and ruined it by their horrible things they make now. But before then, there was a time when people would look to America and the West and to a lesser degree, the UK and Europe, and they would say, I'd like to have that, a family, some place to live, and no war and peace and TV and products and people chow, even though they didn't think of it like that. They wanted the beautiful supermarket with all these packages and boxes and it was promised as something great. And then we ate that stuff and it turned us into terrible things. And, it, and then inevitably a lot of people wanted to look like this. And it's sad. And I made Billy beer and canned mangoes and oh, I just realized that's gonna, mangoes and cannabinoids and aquifers and anything else I've eaten or breathed in the ethers, I'm gonna be bonked out of my mind. But you know what? It's the holidays. So, another thing to be thankful for, I said I have one on deck, but it, it climbed back up. I think I feel coming on again. I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna fill this. I have my Christmas miracle. Oh, please don't let me have lost my balloon. I'll find it. It's a day glow. I have movies. I have a sense of security from locks that I found scattered in the wasteland. I have the smells and memories of real pine. And I have a real cool $10 general tree. I have one single Charlie Brown ornament. I have a candle. I have a candle. It's too bright. But it's going to start blinking. I have that. I'm just going to turn it off. I don't need it. Um, it's a lot. So wherever you got something. Maybe you've got collections of things that you love your anime or your manga. You have the soundtracks and it's the holidays. Maybe you have lo-fi chill jams. Lo-fi holiday jams. I'm gonna have to make you a lo-fi holiday jam somehow that I can get away with on YouTube that's for adults only still, that's not too appealing to anyone, that doesn't have anything that they might not like, all right? But look, there has to be lighting in a show. I can do this, okay? So here you go. Number one honorable annual gift man holiday special outside remembering when it's really about the reason for the season the birth of Christ Jesus the Christ the son of God okay and that's what it's about no it really is and um, if that doesn't do anything for you a Japanese commercial compilation Japanese Christmas commercial compilations it gives you your without the paganism the warm and fuzzies the Christmas lights of commercials are trying to sell you products. Can you tolerate Japanese cuties? I didn't know that I could. I can't. I'm not going to watch that. I'm probably going to watch The Christmas Story on the 24-hour DVD loop until the battery is on my um, Funko Pop cubicle um, heart and flavor solar panels wear out. And then if I need to move someplace safer because the hide wars start encroaching in and couples in love Young couples in love with trad values start dying here. I gotta go deeper in. I'm safe here. This is a weird Lynchian, you know, Black Lodge, White Lodge curtain. It's kind of weird. It's kind of freaky. It's, you know, it's kind of stuff I get to do. Maybe it's the metaphysical benefits of having a brother that's a guy like Holiday Bill. Anyway, I know I'm just a regular, I'm just a regular, what do you call him, mugwort or whatever. I'm just a regular, regular man. That's all I ever wanted to be. I just wanted to be like, my father wanted me to be, uh, but instead I'm making most of it and I have something. You have something. Enjoy it. 
Maybe you can afford to go to a convenience store. He's make, I'm making a grim, a grim holiday for people. I don't know. Have a candy bar that doesn't come from Bisco or anything that has Heck 293 in it. It's not going to be on a label, but um, Pepsi products and whatever. They have um, human embryonic kidney cells in it. Happy holidays. I'm going to go now. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no. There's plenty of things to be good about. DVDs are cheap and plentiful. Maybe you'll be like I did, and you can find a copy of Robin Writes to Congress for a dollar, or you can watch any of the movies I recommended. I, I don't know. I'm probably, um, if Last Man on Earth featuring Vincent Price as the star, he's like the only star, uh, that might be free on YouTube. It's in black and white. It's really old. Uh, somebody probably has it up. You want to watch a movie for the holidays? Last Man on Earth with Vincent Price. If you're a woman, pretend it's a woman. I mean, yeah, it's Vincent Price. So, I like him, but I'm saying that. Hey, it's a sin, all right? He's sodomite. He had a daughter, but there's lots of beards and stuff like that. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is with Vincent Price. It's kind of implied that he was a man of a certain ilk. But he had a daughter. So, whatever. It's okay. Hey, you figure it out. Have a lifetime. Don't live closer together. Spread out. Insist upon it. Make the wealthy elite have the land and the fortunes of nations that they control. Tell them to break it up and prevent this kind of prevent this kind of holiday season. Okay? Madonna's singing jaunty reggae songs about depopulation. Alright? Because she wants this she wants this for us epsilons. Alright, we're the epsilons. We're not. But they want us to be that. So anyway, happy holidays. I'm not going to say those words because that's how he announces himself in Shakespearean dramas. He would say ho and ho and then ho. And that's how the audience would know the devil or the evil person was entering the play. And that's what Santa says. There's your Christmas stuff that's not from Joe Rogan. He would never say that. But Santa Claus, I'll steal it though. There's Joe Rogan Christmas special. Here's for my Christmas special. Ho, 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 in Shakespearean times and before, was how the devil would announce himself or the evil character would announce himself to let the audience know, hey, stupid people, this is the bad guy. So everybody can say, that's the bad guy. And you can feel like you're smart, like you're decoding your drama that you're watching in front of an audience where all the characters are played by men, probably. And anyway, yeah, ho, ho, ho. A Christmas miracle, I found it again. You know what, I gotta get out of here. It's loosened me up too. This also, I don't know if your nicotine loosens you up. I'm gonna go. It's it's great. It's great. I've got to cover up the smells that I'm gonna make, so I don't have to smell them. But then later, I'm gonna inhale them. I've got a Jenkum balloon around here. I've got. I've got the Jenkum. I've got two. I got the balloon. I got can opener. I got weapons. I got survival tools. I got the memories of the world how it used to be. When, they gave, when people were allowed to make videos about the kind of thing I made jokes about, where I talked about a weird dystopian sci-fi future, they gave me an Orwell Award, the Orwee, the 1984 Award for the year, for the best sci-fi dystopian comedy, sit-down, stay-home comedy, a genre I helped invent. But it means a lot to me. It was real people, people like you and me, that gave me this award that I entirely invented with and came up with. And then you decided unanimously on all the weirdos on BitChute that's only, like... 2.47 miles or like four kilometers wherever you live however you measure uh, down the street from 77 brigade and that's not cool but you know what is cool i got my award i got my self-defense implements i've got this i've got uh things to eat i'm gonna be blasted off some more that's like a bonus i need a christmas miracle i didn't even think about i've got the last man on earth one of my favorite movies I've got, you know, um, a sock. I don't do that anymore. I'm trying, I, you know what I mean? I think about them and sometimes I wake up and I'm like, oh no, a pearly oyster is my reward. I didn't remember what I dreamed about. I hope she's pretty. But anyway, this holiday season, um, maybe find a cool lo-fi holiday chill jams or something. I don't know what I could possibly make for you from a Shadowlands or a Shadow Band. Maybe just a re-upload of something I don't know I don't know but anyway thank you for hanging out with me because I alienated and isolated myself and I did it I want to do loners 
the loners or lone people, however you choose to identify, a lone person's people's holiday special for whatever it is you believe, if you're alone by yourself and you still want to ride the wave of the holiday season, I like to. I ride the good vibes of whatever holiday it is, if I know about it. I mean, like, I'm not, I don't really notice when it's like Ramadan or anything, like, yeah, we. But you know what I mean? Like, the ones about consumerism, buying Halloween stuff, or Christmas stuff, or Valentine's stuff, or St. Patrick's stuff, or Easter stuff, and all the candy. A lot of them have candy, good candies and stuff. They all have good candies. And the winters has like salted meats and cheeses and things that don't need to be refrigerated. But like, this is the flesh of a beast. And then it doesn't need to be refrigerated. You're like, no, you can even buy it at the bargain outlet well after Christmas. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. And now people live on that stuff in the Shadowlands realm and shadow band. I don't know if they should, but at least some of it's before they started enculturating and filling all your stuff full of their weird, like Natalie Portman again, annihilation stuff where they try and put their DNA and spores into everything and The Last of Us and everything. They make food and it makes your daughter into Juno and then she dances with weird uh, funny looking chicks she's like that's what I survived so that you wouldn't reproduce and have babies or anything like don't worry about it we got that stranding coming out and that's about how babies are born I have no idea what that's about I just know it has something to do with like using fetuses as a battery or something it's disgusting and, and orange man alright so I'm glad to hear I have so many things to be thankful for you can find something around where you live that's pretty cool to have. Uh, this is a weird personal thing. I'll tell you about this. I used to hide, I used to hide, and maybe sometimes I still do, candy and stuff like that, and little snacks. Oh, it's a little, little fruit bar or something, and I'll hide them around my place, and when I don't want to go anywhere, and funds and supplies, or I, mean, I just don't want to go anywhere. I'm like, I wonder if I have anything that I hit around my house, like a person with an eating disability, or some kind of dysmorphia or whatever it is, it's wrong with people that makes them hide a food. I'm like, I see if I have anything anywhere. And it's like my own little personal treasure hunt to find snacks. And then I eat them. Maybe you buy stuff and forget you bought it and then you sober up and you find it and you're like, oh wow, yeah, I bought that, cool. It's like a present. Happy holidays. Do what you can. I'm gonna do what I can to drop a deuce, Make a gent, have a duke, have a smoke, while I take a deuce, while I make a jenk, so I can have a duke. And then I'm gonna jenk off. Happy holidays. And don't forget the reason for the season. Sincerely and truly though, don't forget. I didn't. I had told you I ran, I was like, I don't wanna forget about it. Oh no, I'm losing, I, I, he's around here somewhere. But anyway, it's a burst birth of Jesus Christ whether you accept him or not it's everybody's Lord and Savior it's the Son of God even if you don't accept him he's for you and all you have to do is call your father talk to him silent prayer to your father and then we can have the same dad it's cool like we're related somehow maybe we are but don't ask me for money or anything or favors I'm not going to do that stuff okay I'm out in Shadowlands I'm in Shadow Band I have room for a plus one alright Cool. Okay. Also, viable womb. Hey, if you just want to die out with me, cool. If you had a viable womb, cool. That's a plus. I don't know what you want me to. Cool. Better be a looker, okay? And you better be a survivor and a hunter and scavenger. I'm not going to say gatherer because it's just like food's available. It's everywhere. You don't really going to starve. But if you want to have the holidays and remember stuff like this, and blast off on cannabinoids or botched it doesn't matter I have super bacteria nothing's gonna get to me because you did that you thought it was gonna mess people up and then uh -uh, all they do is get back to nature and all your evil dark secrets of evil backfired and it made a Shadowlanders run the shadow band uh, fortified and strong for many moons I feel like I'm getting younger or something strong like bull yes you better look out I can't stand up I just I can't stand up obviously and I'm gonna be eating pineapple. So, if I find another Christmas miracle and find somebody, you know what pineapple does? Yes, it's a courtesy. And it also eliminates the need for this. If you got some, if you got this and somebody, yeah, anywhere you want, 
Maybe that's a Christmas miracle we can all look forward to. I'm gonna leave you with that. Thank you for hanging out with me. This is like a lo-fi chill gem, right? I'm not gonna title it that anymore, but that's what I used to call them. So I'm gonna get in trouble. This is a holiday special. It's another one. You're welcome. I don't know what year it is. I haven't decided yet uh, because I can't remember right now. But I'm gonna find out. It's really easy to find out. You always gonna just like check in and let you know. They want you to know everything, like data or whatever. You just like send a line up and like, okay, here's when they say everything is. So I'll let you know. It'll be an entitled. It's somewhere between Agenda 21 and Blade Runner 2049. Okay, so here you go. Hi, future Scott, near future Scott, holiday special, extreme LARPicism TV. I'm not going to let him stop me from doing what it is that I do and give you a little bit of God the Father and Jesus too, even though I get it wrong. I know my heart's in the right place and I don't keep any boundaries between me and my father. So he knows. He knows what I'm, he knows all that stuff. And you know what I didn't show you? any dirty movies, no fat, all right? It's comedies. And Robin Williams diving naked into a pool in a plum basket, that doesn't do it for me. I'm a man, cisgender male. That's why I'm out here, not in a smart city, okay? And I don't even wanna know what my brother's doing, okay? It's kinda of like his big day, all right, with the horns and everything. I pray for him, I do. I'm gonna get out of here now. And you can too. Thanks for hanging out with me, I'm just gonna shut it off, okay? Hey, a wave like, happy holidays, hi, everything's great.